Okay. Well, uh, my name is Dr. Jody Simon. I'm an LSU Health Sciences Center uh, ophthalmology resident. Today I'll be presenting my abstract entitled The Role of Hyaluronic Acid Injections in the Management of Cicatricial Ectropion. And I'd like to thank my mentors, Dr. Worley and Dr. Al Hariri, who couldn't be here with me today. So unfortunately, I have no financial disclosures during this presentation. <laughs> and I'll have to um, inform everybody that I will speak about an off-label use of a hyaluronic acid dermal filler called Juvederm Ultra. So the goal of this presentation will be to describe the su successful outcomes of two patients who presented to us with moderate to severe cicatricial ectropion who were treated with a hyaluronic acid dermal filler. And the objective will to be to demonstrate a safe and effective way that we did this. So atropion is basically just turning out of the eyelids, and it can be from several different causes, um, but cicatricial atropion in particular is from a lack of skin in the area, or what we call the anterior lamellar area. And this um, pulls down the lid, it causes traction on the lid, and it averts the eyelid margin. It can be due to patients with burns, they can have mechanical or surgical trauma in the area, it can be due to chronic inflammation or skin damage from the sun, and the problem with ectropion is that the eyelid doesn't oppose um, the globe, so these patients are left with lots of issues from exposure. They get irritation, redness, it can lead to keratopathies, it can lead to corneal ulcers, and eventually blindness. And the treatment for cicatricial ectropion is often very difficult. It is a surgical disease, um, and it requires several different procedures to address all of their um, problems. Um, you have to surgically release the vertical traction on the lid. Um, a lot of times these patients are left with some horizontal laxity just from the traction that's been there. Um, so you have to tighten the lid horizontally. Um, a lot of patients, because of the paucity of skin in the area, end up having to have full thickness skin grafts from the preauricular or clavicular areas. And sometimes we even have to use spacer grafts or implants. And while this helps the lid sit next to the globe well and prevent some of the exposure, the, these patients are left with a mechanical disadvantage in that the eyelid doesn't move or retract when the patient needs it to. So they're often left with discomfort when they try to blink or close their eyes or look down. So we were presented with two patients um, who had moderate to severe uh, cicatricial ectropion, and they had already had several different eyelid surgeries, and while they were left with um, acceptable results, they were still very uncomfortable. They still had some leftover cicatricial ectropion and some corneal issues, and we really were left having to think outside the box for these patients. And hyaluronic acid fillers have mostly been used cosmetically, um, but the way that we propose they would work is that they could add volume to the lower lid, helping it to oppose the globe. They could expand the anterior lamella and release some of that vertical traction. They could also act as a spacer, but they would move with the lid a little bit better than the available options that we have now. And they also have an added benefit in that they could hydrate and rejuvenate the skin in patients who are left with burns and scarring. So hyaluronic acid dermal fillers have been FDA approved for treating facial wrinkles and folds and also for restoring volume to the face. This is mostly cosmetic and I know it's something that most people in this room are probably not interested in or have had experience with. Uh, but these are some of the commercially available fillers in the U.S. And we chose to use Ju Juvederm um, because it has a little more hydrating properties. It would add a little more volume to give us a little bit more of what we needed. And so here are our two patients. So the first patient had um, an invasive basal cell carcinoma on the lower lid that was removed. He required extensive reconstructive surgery. He required a skin graft to the area. And while he was happy with his results, like I said, he still had some irritation and some ectropion left over. And the first picture is what we, um, it's a good example of what we call lag of thalmos. And this is when patients with ectropion try to close their eyes at night or um, look down, they're left with a little gap between the upper and lower lid, and that's what causes a lot of their exposure problems, especially at nighttime. And this is the patient pre-procedure as well. You can see that the lower lid is um, not sitting next to the globe. The lateral uh, canthal area right here 
um, is just very distorted and not sitting where it needs to be. This is the patient during the procedure. Um, the blanching that you see is from a lidocaine with epinephrine injection that we used. You can see our linear markings. Um, and we went in with a blunt needle subcutaneously along the lid margin and we made sure to inject in a retrograde fashion so that we weren't entering into any blood vessels. Um, and this fourth page, uh, picture is a picture of the patient right after the procedure. And you see that his uh, lid margin sits right on the globe. His lateral canthal area looks much more formed. And this is the patient 30 minutes after the procedure. You can see he was left with some bruising, but he walked out that day with his problem solved. And the next patient is a patient who had a Roman candle injury to his eye. He was left with a thermochemical burn, and his big problem was that he had lots of necrosis of the lower lid skin after the injury. He had several different procedures, but you can see he barely has any eyelid skin, and there's so much traction that it's pulling the conjunctiva out onto the margin and over the margin of the eyelid. Um, and this is another pre-procedure uh, picture, and you can see how the traction is really causing the lid to move away from the globe. And this is a picture of this patient one month after his procedure. Um, you can see that the eyelid has been expanded, um, and you can note that the traction has been released. The conjunctiva is not riding all the way over the margin, and the lid is sitting next to the globe. And this is also the patient one month after the procedure. Um, he presented to us with lag ophthalmos as well, and you can see in this picture it's resolved. And this is the patient three months after the procedure. And um, it's important to note in this picture that um, if you compare it to the first picture when he walked in, um, the intrapalpebral fissure, or the distance between the upper and the lower lid, has been shortened, and the upper lid is sitting in the same position on the cornea, you can see, and so that means that the lower lid has really expanded and is sitting next to the globe and, and really uh, helping the patient. He's been very comfortable. And both of these patients we've had a nine-month follow-up with, and neither of them have required any other surgeries or procedures to their eyelids. So in conclusion, we think that hyaluronic acid dermal fillers can be a safe um, and less invasive option or another tool for patients who present to us with moderate to severe cicatrice electropion. And we think that they can be particularly useful in patients who might be poor surgical candidates, patients who have had extensive burns who are in the ICU and can't get to surgery, uh, patients who have already had several surgeries that aren't working for them, um, patients who may be prone to scarring or keloid formation after surgery. And even though the longevity of dermal fillers is limited, uh, we believe that their mechanical effect is long-lasting. And these are my references.